Video is one of the holy grails of generative AI, and today we're one massive step closer for this all being possible on a local GPU. Today, Genmo AI released a preview of their latest text-to-video model called Mochi1. And you might think, well, sure, we've heard a lot of updates about AI video models in the last few weeks, and that's great, but why is this model different? This model is different because it's entirely open source. You can get the weights right now, and it's entirely licensed with Apache 2.0, so we don't have to worry about weird licensing like Stability AI gave us with their previous models. The fidelity of this model is truly incredible, along with the native resolution and the frame rates it's capable of. These are things that I previously thought we wouldn't see outside of closed source models from companies like Meta or Runway ML, which is an entire startup dedicated to only doing AI video and it's still pretty expensive. Obviously startups like Black Forest Labs are probably quick behind working on their models really hard. And the timing of this is all pretty interesting because this week we also saw a release from Stability AI, the first in a number of months after the entire startup basically went bankrupt. And it was just an iterative improvement on some of their previous large models. So in this video, I wanna get into whether or not you can actually run this on your own GPUs locally, what kind of GPUs you can use, where you can use this for free right now, and what these advancements mean for the future of local AI and just generative content in general. Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So Genmo has been relatively well known in this space for about a year. Their early models were quite interesting, but their focus really has primarily been on research, not necessarily making products that are widely available to people doing local AI. And this model is different because it combines a number of features that I thought we would only ever see coming out of Runway ML. And the scientific backing of it is also quite interesting. Uh, tools like Pika and a number of other video tools are interesting, but a lot of times they're limited by the way they're actually trained. So for instance, Pika was really good at underwater scenes and basic camera movement. Then we saw models like Sora, which focused more on 3D scenes and the ability to have much more movement actually going on in a scene, creating much more immersive content. And things like Depth of Field leaning into more cinematic concepts, thinking that that might be another avenue to add more realism to AI-generated video. And Mochi's interesting because it matches the performance of a number of these models, and it's something you can run right away, along with the research being entirely open source. So if you have the chops to implement this yourself, you can see exactly the processes and the ways that their team went about creating this functionality. And if you have enough GPU power, you can actually run this on your own right now. So let's get into what makes this model incredible. So this is on Hugging Face right now, along with GitHub, and the results are pretty interesting. So Mochi's overview goes something like this. Mochi One Preview is an open, state-of-the-art video generation model with high fidelity motion and strong prompt adherence in preliminary evaluation. So this is kind of like an alpha release of this model. This model dramatically closes the gap between closed and open video generation systems. We're releasing the model under a permissive Apache 2.0 license, where you can try this for free on their playground. Installation's pretty straightforward. You just have to get the weights, run it, and we'll get into just a bit later uh, how much GPU power you really need, which is why I think this is cool, but I think we can still hold out for the developments of Black Forest Labs for a more generally available uh, AI video model that you can run locally. So what is different about this architecture in terms of their previous work and a number of other common AI video models? So they say here that Mochi One represents a significant advancement in open source video generation, featuring a 10 billion parameter diffusion model built on their novel asymmetric diffusion transformer or uh, ASIMDIT architecture, which is trained entirely from scratch. The content it was trained on, we probably don't really know. And it's the largest generative model ever openly released. So they're not saying it's the biggest ever, but they, in theory, open sourced their weights for all of this. And also, in theory, this will be maybe one of the first video models we can actually uh, fine tune and create LoRa's on top of, which is pretty cool. What's also incredible and makes this model even more interesting is that alongside this Mochi preview, they've open sourced their video VAE. Their architecture also efficiently processes user prompts alongside compressed video tokens as input by streamlining text processing and focusing neural network capacity on visual reasoning. Uh, these are some really interesting things that we've also seen Mistral do with some of their earliest vision models, uh, especially in terms of batching how you actually turn videos in the tokens and just approaching in an open source way that we can actually observe now the idea of tokenizing video at all. And a curious thing that Genmo shares here is that although their visual tokenizer is quite good, 
They say that their visual stream has nearly four times as many parameters as a equivalent text stream, which they use another layer within a different dimension to actually quantify and employ here. So basically they're saying that their asymmetric design using both video tokens and text reduces inference memory requirements. So in other words, makes it possible to use fewer GPUs or less powerful GPUs to do this. And that many modern diffusion models use multiple pre-trained language models to represent user prompts. And in contrast, Mochi1 is simply encoding their prompts and using a single language model to do this, which is pretty cool. Now there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is you only need four GPUs to run this model. Uh, the bad news is that each of those GPUs needs to be an NVIDIA H100. So yes, we're getting better. We're getting closer to a true kind of consumer equivalent. Granted, if you're just gonna use this for a little bit um, and you wanna do it all locally, this is still a pretty cost-effective machine rental. Obviously there are lots of services that will wrap on top of this and offer kind of free generations or um, a much more simple interface, but this is not bad. And it sets a really interesting, exciting precedent for what we might see in the future from Black Forest Labs, which granted, I would think that we'd see more interesting work from Black Forest Labs than we would maybe see from whatever engineers are actually left at Stability AI. Now with all video models, obviously there's a safety component of this. Uh, they say, while steps have been taken to limit NSFW content, organizations should implement additional safety measures if they plan to wrap this and provide it as a UI. There are also some limitations because this is an alpha release. So obviously the current checkpoint is going to change before the official release. There are a few known limitations. The first is that it generates videos at 480p today. And this is kind of crazy because there was a while where the notion of creating videos over 280p was thought to be computationally just ridiculous and that this would never be a, a common thing that you would just be like, oh yeah, 480p, great. In some edge cases with extreme motion, minor warping and distortions can occur, just like with all these models. Uh, Mochi1 is also optimized for photorealistic styles and, and does not perform well with animated content. Although I've seen some pretty interesting previews where it, it appears to generate anime esque video almost perfectly, which I think is pretty cool. So the official blog is also quite interesting just to see what they want to showcase in terms of why this model is better than other video models. So they say unmatched motion quality, basically showing that you can have depth of field, multiple subjects interacting in motion and not have the model get kind of confused at what's going on. And in this case, having a golden retriever or like anything furry moving around uh, is a great benchmark for this. Again, they note they mentioned superior prompt adherence, where you can get a lot of control over characters and settings and actions um, with alignment with just text. Another big thing that they're very excited about here is motion tracking. So actually uh, creating fluid human action and expression that's actually pretty realistic. And for the longest time, this was actually something that was quite hard. And there was a lot of debate as to what the best way to acquire this data was, whether it was video of people or just motion capture on its own. And the last thing I wanna go over are their evaluations. Now, obviously each of these companies evaluate models in a different way. And a lot of times uh, it has to do with prompt adherence or it has to do with just kind of what people saw and which they thought was the most realistic. And of course, realistic is kind of an objective measure but things are interesting here. And the interesting thing about this is this is one of the first models that as an alpha model appears to have better prompt adherence and ELO scores than a lot of very impressive models like Runway ML Gen 3, Pika, and even Kling. And Kling was basically accepted to be one of the more advanced models in terms of motion. But you can see here that the Genmo Mochi 1 preview is outperforming all of these other models. Obviously these are evaluations from Genmo, so we expect that to be kind of the case. Yeah, this model is incredibly impressive. Obviously, we're not at a point where we all have four H100s at home, but I don't think we're that far away. And I think if we keep this precedent going, if we show that there's really a market here, it sets us up really well to see some really impressive work coming out of Black Forest Labs when they finally announce their generative AI video model that's intended for local GPUs. So I'm curious, um, do you guys use generative AI video? Do you mostly prefer to just use um, text to image? Is this kind of interesting to you? Do you have a GPU machine that you think can actually run this locally? Let me know in the comments below. It's always interesting to see what you guys have to say. As always, I hope you learned something from this video. If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you in the next one.